perfect. All right, so um, I'm very happy to introduce the Chicago Abortion Fund today. The Chicago Abortion Fund is a nonprofit organization that provides, in their own words, quote, financial, logistical, and emotional support to people seeking abortion care, end quote. CAF supports those seeking abortions at every step of their journeys with services including pre-abortion informational resources, monetary grants to assist with the cost of abortion care, and monthly post-abortion community circles, to name just a few. CAF aspires to realize bodily freedom and autonomy for every person and embraces reproductive justice as clear from their commitment to sharing diverse resources that affirm birth and parenting as well as abortion. CAF supports grantees from all of Chicago, Illinois, and across the Midwest, and there are no geographical restrictions on CAF's work. Anyone who calls CAF can find support. Locally, CAF played an instrumental advocacy role in securing the passage of HB 40, a 2017 Illinois state law that expanded Illinois Medicaid coverage to include abortion. Most recently, CAF launched a billboard campaign to remind Illinois residents or anyone passing through the state that abortion is healthcare and that Illinois Medicaid covers abortion. I'm very happy to speak with Kudsia Sharif, who serves as CAF's program coordinator. Kudsia is a fierce advocate for reproductive justice and an aspiring birth worker. As program coordinator at Chicago Abortion Fund, she oversees all helpline operations and develops other support programs, events, and fundraisers. At the core of Kutsia's passion for reproductive justice is an understanding of all people's inherent worth and a sense of duty to ensure dignity, respect, and empathy for all. During her undergrad at UChicago, Kutsia was involved with Students for Justice in Palestine, a co-founder of UChicago United, and founder of Project Reproductive Freedom. They are also Chicago-bound 2015 alum. Now, as program coordinator at Chicago Abortion Fund, Kudsia strives to embody and practice an unapologetically Black, queer, feminist, and anti-capitalist politic. Thank you for joining us today, Kudsia. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, I want to start with CAF's mission statement and how it intersects with the larger social justice organizing scene in Chicago. So um, part of the mission statement mentions creating lives, families, and communities that are healthy, safe, and thriving. So how does this mission and how does your organization fit into the larger social justice organizing scene in Chicago? Yeah, well, I think it's definitely central to what we do um, and is central to how we see our work in terms of moving towards like better alternatives um, and just like thriving communities. Um, so we do that through our financial support, our emotional support, and also through like community programming and political education stuff um, around shifting culture, around abortion, um, our, <laughs> there's just, and fighting like abortion stigma specifically um, in order to like create better futures for ourselves. And I think in terms of how that fits into like the greater like Chicago scheme, I mean, we are partners with and, um, like support a lot of other orgs that are working towards similar goals and through like different perspectives and lenses. All right, amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so more specific to CAF, what is reproductive justice? Um, I think a lot of people have heard of reproductive rights, but maybe mm -hmm. not reproductive justice. And I'm wondering if you can give sort of the typical de definition um, and then what it means to you. Yeah, so the way that I was introduced to reproductive justice and I think makes it a bit easier to understand is thinking about reproductive health, reproductive rights, like you said, and reproductive justice and how those three are distinct. So reproductive health encompasses um, the delivery of healthcare services to people um, and reproductive rights is about um, using like the law and advocacy to um, get rights through those systems for around reproductive issues. So like uh, an example of reproductive health would be like, you know, your doctor prescribing you birth control and reproductive rights would be um, making it so that insurances cover or required to cover birth control for anyone. And then reproductive justice um, is a framework that encompasses um, like holistically the what reproductive health and rights might fail to in terms of addressing systems and culture and how those um, ultimately drive those other things. So 
Um, CAF also does like advocacy work around uh, laws and legislation as well. Um, but our work uh, and our really our vision and how we like see our um, our delivery of services. So like although we do you know we do provide direct services when we're when we're doing that we're thinking about. Um, the other systems and things that might be impacting people um, because we know that access, just being able to get an abortion isn't the end of the conversation for so many people. Mm -hmm. We're talking to people that um, are struggling to pay for an abortion, but there are also other barriers like transportation, getting to the clinic, um, interpersonal violence, um, and relationships impact our ability to access healthcare too. So that was kind of uh, dabbles into what reproductive justice can encompass. It can encompass economic justice and also housing justice, gender justice, um, and lots more. Yeah, thank you. Um, I like the, the term holistic for describing it. And I feel like that also tied in with how CAF intersects with other social justice organizations. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I also noticed this when I was looking through CAF on your website um, and on your social media, but it seems like you really incorporate community building and emotional support alongside more like pragmatic support, like financial and logistical support. So why is it important to do this or how do you do this? Yeah, that part is definitely really central to what I think makes Chicago Abortion Fund unique. Um, and really, I think a lot of other abortion funds across the country are doing the same thing, but our work touches people. And when we don't, when we aren't centering people in what we do, it, it fails to, to meet the needs and things that people are wanting. Um, and we believe that everyone deserves to have a dignified experience. Um, and we want to do everything we can to to support them and help them feel affirmed in their decision because we know there is so much negative stigma um, that folks are just seeing around us, whether it's directed at them by someone personally in their life um, because of their decision to get an abortion or um, just messages they're seeing online or from politicians, like those things impact people. Um, and so we, you know, in on our helpline, we have case managers, um, who are calling back folks and helping getting them funding, but also um, asking them if they have support, do they have someone to talk to, um, and like offering that extension, because we know a lot in, maybe in the healthcare system, like our providers, they are amazing, but they can't provide wraparound care. Um, just the restrictions of being within the medical and healthcare field don't allow for that, which is a different <laughs> discussion, but, um, we, you know, yeah, just to wrap it up, yeah, we're really trying to meet people where they're at and understand that everybody's experience is different. So there's no one way to, to support someone in their abortion. Um, and we're trying to do everything we can to, to fill in the gaps that people aren't getting from their communities, their environments. It's amazing. Um, so as you mentioned a bit earlier, CAF does advocacy work um, related to legal restrictions or just the legal system in general um, and how it connects with reproductive justice. Um, and I'm wondering in your experience or in CAF's experience, how does sort of grassroots community-centered organizing or organizations interact with the law and public policy or interact with these larger systems that have a lot of power in restricting or governing? Um, how people achieve bodily autonomy in this case? Yeah, well, I think there's, I kind of have two answers for that. And one isn't necessarily policy related, but I think Chicago Abortion Fund in our community and the ways that folks mobilize in our peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising campaigns shows the ways that people power can have impact on people's lives. Like that is last year um, during the, well, I guess this year, during the, during the pandemic, what is time? Um, <laughs> at the end of April was when we were planning to have our big annual fundraiser the year before we'd raised um, almost, uh, what was it? We raised a lot of money. And then <laughs> this year in 2020, we were able to fundraise over $80,000 um, in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Like during a pandemic, 
um, which is just incredible to me. I think the ways that people are able to, to pull together money um, in that way. And I think, again, I think it speaks to like people power and being able to move big systems. But then the other part, again, yeah, with advocacy, we, uh, CAF has played played a big role in the passage of HB 40. I wasn't part of the organization then, but leadership then um, really took storytelling. Um, Brittany Mosseler, who was the executive director, she told her abortion story to um, Bruce Rauner, who was the governor at the time. Um, and that really uh, pushed him to make his decision, I think. <laughs> um, and and we are really invested in building the leadership of people who have had abortions and who have been funded by Chicago Abortion Fund um, because we believe alongside organizations like We Testify that people ha who have had abortions and are having abortions should be the ones talking about it. Um, and um, so, yeah. And with HB40, it was a lot of like support also from our partners in Illinois, like the Illinois Caucus for Adolescent Health um, also played a really big role in building paper power and just like talking about what was going on and bringing to the forefront because abortion is seen as like controversial. Just getting people to talk about it can really have an impact on individual lives and those big systems and move people like the governor um, to support things that maybe they wouldn't have if we weren't bringing these conversations to light. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing to hear that, like the power of abortion storytelling mm -hmm. in that legal setting. I mean, when I was growing up hearing about abortion, the dialogue was always pro-choice or pro-life, not really about personal experience or storytelling. So that's really great to hear. Um, yeah, yeah. When I was talking to Alicia, who um, actually interned with CAF, is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, she mentioned um, independent clinics versus Planned Parenthood. There's a distinction there. Um, and while we're on the topic of sort of like the structures related to abortion care, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. That's not something I'm familiar with. Yeah, actually, um, I... There's definitely, um, I mean, so Planned Parenthood is like a big abortion provider that a lot of people think of when they think of abortion providers, they mm -hmm. might think of Planned Parenthood. Um, and then there are independent abortion providers that also provide abortions, um, but aren't talked about as much and also don't get the attention of funders. So um, CAF is really dedicated to like uh, supporting our independent abortion providers, our local providers. Um, and we also work with Planned Parenthood, like not to, um, like Planned Parenthood has, plays a really important role in our communities in terms of providing care. There's um, so many clinics in the Chicagoland area um, and places where there aren't other clinics. Um, so people would have to travel, you know, out of their neighborhood or out of their county or whatever. Um, so with independent providers, yeah, they don't have that like name recognition. Um, but we see we we work with a lot of our independent providers in the Chicago area and also um, in other states because people are actually majority of abortions in the country happen at independent um, abortion providers. I think it's oh, like two thirds of abortions are being done by independent providers and they are really, um, you know, they are providing care for people. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think in terms of like structures, like the, the funding piece is there, um, but also, I mean, independent providers uh, are provide jobs in their communities as well. Um, and like working for an abortion clinic might not <laughs> sound like something that a lot of people want to do, um, but that can really have an impact on the people um, that live in a community when there's um, like an, a, an affirming space to, to work in. Um, I think it would be super dope to work in an abortion clinic because yeah. I think providers are just amazing people um, and not just the people who are uh, you know, prescribing or doing procedures, but the the nurses and the the staff. Obviously, we work really closely with staff in our clinics because um, we're dealing with funding and stuff. And everyone is just so great. We're actually 
this is a moment for a plug for programming that CAF is doing um, this month. We've been doing a series of like bite sized kind of political education stuff around reproductive justice in particular mm -hmm. um, called Talk About It taco because there's a national network of abortion funds has a taco and beer challenge thing that they do um, which is a fundraiser and so we've been doing these kind of talk about it um, to just talk about things related to reproductive justice and uplift um, some of our partners as well so we started out by just talking about abortion funds and we brought in different reps um, and leaders of abortion funds from across the country and talked to them last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, we talked about birth work and the importance of doulas and birth workers um, in supporting people holistically. And um, later on this month, we're gonna be joined by some of our independent provider partners to talk about the importance of independent abortion providers and supporting them and how folks can do that, whether it's through becoming an escort or uh, making donations um, if it's like a nonprofit clinic. Um, so yeah, look out for that if you're interested. That's, in That's a lot of virtual programs. Program. Yeah, they're, they're like, um, like 45 minute, like, uh, Facebook live things just like chatting about stuff I actually I went to the conversation between you and Judith Arcana oh yeah um, from the Jane Collective that was on YouTube live that was really cool mm -hmm. um okay let's see so for CAF um you mentioned all the virtual programming um do you have any other upcoming initiatives or goals um and I guess that's more like technical, but also in general, like what is, what is CAP's vision for a liberated Chicago in the context of reproductive justice? And what, what are the next steps you wanna see? Yeah, um, things that, I mean, right now CAF is really in like a growing space and expanding. Um, we're hoping to, you know, come into all the money so that we can continue mm -hmm. to grow and hire more staff um, because really building that infrastructure is what's gonna allow us to build out programs and um, like be organizing a lot more around reproductive justice issues um, in our communities. And uh, we are like um, in coalition and like partnership with other organizations in Illinois and in Chicago around um, different like legislation related to reproductive health um, and figuring out how we can leverage like what capacity we do have to support those initiatives um and we are definitely like uh in terms of our long-term vision um and like you said like what does a liberated um chicago in terms of reproductive justice i think that's like a huge question i don't even know mm -hmm. but um i think we're definitely working towards just like building power around an explicit like reproductive justice um lens mm -hmm. because we think it's we just see how when when we aren't looking and organizing and building through reproductive justice um there's people getting left out mm -hmm. and people at the margins that aren't um being empowered and when we like that, that's just not gonna that's not gonna get us anywhere. Um, if folks are being left out, so we're really um, trying to like build with um, partners to be able to 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 move legislators and also build like alternatives, alternative forms of care in, in our communities. I mean, that's something we're really passionate about in terms of emphasizing empathy and dignity around abortion, but beyond in, in all ways that we can. So thinking about building programming through arts and culture and mm -hmm. um, workshops and um, how we can be like re-envisioning how we do this work um, so that we're engaging people in new ways, I think is important to bring them in. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was really, really intrigued to learn about your post-abortion um, community circles. Like that seems like a real community building approach to take because I feel like the idea of how, how is it for someone after they have an abortion is rarely mm -hmm. talked about. Um, 
Yeah, just because abortion isn't talked about and there are no spaces for people to talk about abortion, um, their experiences with it. So we really wanted to try and, and I mean, now we can do it virtually and stuff, but hopefully in the near, maybe not so near future, we'll be able to really build spaces for people who've had abortions explicitly Mm -hmm. and invest in them. Yeah, the mention of the virtual nature of everything right now brings me to a question about COVID um, and how this pandemic has impacted your work um, and the people you serve. Yeah, there's so many. I mean, the pandemic has impacted every single one of us in numerous ways. So I think, um, I mean, our work has definitely been impacted by that in terms of more need for funding, more need for support of all kinds. Um, And like I was saying before, like every abortion experience is different and now there's a whole host of reasons more why it would be different. Um, People's reasons for, um, you know, choosing whether they're doing medication abortion or procedure abortion are different now because everyone's at home. So with the medication abortion at home, be as um, private as maybe it would have felt before. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's just so many. We actually had a um, abortion 101 event (laughs) uh, with Midwest Access Project, um, and they train um, residents and people who are becoming uh, healthcare providers in abortion care um, when when they can't get it from their own like education because most med schools and places aren't teaching about abortion so anyway we collaborated with them and we we talked for (laughs) a long time about all the ways that COVID has been changing access and impacting people's ability to get the care they need when um when things were really locked down you know there were clinics closed or less appointments um there's still no guests allowed in and sometimes that can impact um, people's ability to like get a ride and have someone come with them. Mm -hmm. Um, If somebody has children, then they need to figure out what they're doing with their children. It's like the same things that were uh, things to consider and questions before are still now, but there's just also a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I realized I should have asked this earlier, um, but I was wondering, who are the communities that you serve? Is there a specific um, geographic location that you see a lot of people from or a specific age group or demographic? Well, not really. I mean, like I said before, um, we'll help anyone who needs our help. So, I mean, we fund most at like the clinics that we work with most, but there are plenty of other abortion clinics that we aren't currently working with. But if somebody was going to a different clinic, we would try and get funding for them there. Um, So in terms of demographic, I guess it would just be like Chicago and Illinois. Um, But actually as of like, we don't have the stats for August yet, but in July, over 70% of our callers um, and grantees were from outside of Illinois. Um, So either having their abortions um, outside of Illinois or traveling to Illinois for their abortion. Um, So we're, like I said, supporting anyone who needs it. Um, And different ages, I mean, (laughs) everyone loves someone who's had an abortion. And um, like I said, every experience is different. Um, We do support a lot of parents. A lot of people think that parents aren't getting abortions, but most of the people we talk to are already parenting um, and they know what's best for their families. So, yeah. Okay, I have one more question left, um, but since we have some time, um, I wanted to ask you a question about birth work, which you mentioned. Um, Something I really like and appreciate about CAF, or at least what I've read on your website, is that you honor both the choice to not have a child and the choice to have a child. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was wondering um, what kind of resources you have for parenting and about your interest, um, your personal interest in birth work as well. Yeah, so CAF is definitely, I mean, a lot of people might think that people that fund abortion like hate babies or something, but we actually love babies and we (laughs) love people that have babies. And we love children and we love people that have children. Um, And uh, a lot of times in organizing spaces, like children are like 
a bad thing like at organizing meetings you know children aren't allowed and at our events we work with um, Chicago Child Care Collective um, and they help provide child care for um, organizations like CAF or other um, like organizing groups or local groups whatever um, with free child care so that people who are parents can be engaged in this work and that's really important to us um, to be able to like provide that so that anybody can <laughs> or hopefully anybody can um, be looking for and yeah looking for a political home in reproductive justice and my um my particular interest is, I mean, reproductive justice introduced me to birth justice. And um, when I was at UChicago, I did a, I did the Posen Human Rights Internship with um, Black Women Birthing Justice, which is a collective in Oakland, California. Um, and uh, that was just an amazing experience. I got to spend so much time with doulas and midwives and like learn about what they were doing and the work that they were doing to train um and like bring people in their community into the work because um so much of like popularized midwifery and doula work in the united states has been around white women mm -hmm. um and like the origins of birth work is not at all <laughs> that so i think um that was really like uh, inspiring for me and i'm really excited to like be doing this work in calf and also thinking about um exploring my own um, journey and like education around birth work um, and yeah and it's cool that I get to like be in conversation like I was on Tuesday with people who are doing like what I <laughs> um, would love to do I just like love babies I would love to catch babies like as a midwife um, <laughs> and I just think birth is like so incredible and uh, pregnancy as well um, and I, and I just want to like my interest is in like supporting people, getting to like witness the magic, I think, but mm -hmm. really getting to um, support people so they can be empowered to like do what they want and um, listen to their bodies in a way that we're so often told not to. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Um, I feel like, sorry, were you gonna say something else? Mm -hmm. um, there are no babies in my immediate family or in my apartment and I feel like it's been so long since I've like randomly gotten to hold a child you, know, mm -hmm. you like run into babies if someone asks you to hold them while they're like you're at the grocery store or something so I wish I could hold a baby <laughs> um, finally do you have any advice for someone who would be interested in engaging in the kind of work that you do and um, obviously it's gonna be you Chicago students um, watching this, so I feel like your advice about engaging in channels at U Chicago or just about U Chicago in general could be like particularly helpful. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> U Chicago is like um, it can be a lot sometimes, and I think uh, for me, just getting through college was like a lot, um, mm -hmm. and finding like people that were interested in the things that I was interested in, like was what grounded me. Um, and that was through, a lot of it was through organizing stuff and also just um, uh, surrounding myself with black people. And in terms of like, um, I did end up starting Project Reproductive Freedom. Um, and that was kind of just like, I came back from my first internship um, which I got like Metcalf funding for to work on um, the helpline of my local abortion fund. I'm from Philadelphia. Um, I'm also so, from Philadelphia. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so um, so it was like to get to. I came back to campus and I was like, nobody is really talking about this. And I think there's so there's so many things that you can be passionate about. Sometimes it can feel like yours is maybe too niche or something. Um, and I just like posted on Facebook, like a Google form, like who would be interested in like starting an RSO? Um, and then it actually happened. I never would have thought that it would have happened because starting an RSO isn't as easy as like tour guides like to make it seem. Yeah. But um, it was just really great to find that even though it was like just a few of us and we just kind of did what we wanted to do. Um, and in terms of like turning that into a job after graduation, 
Um, a lot of that was luck, but <laughs> it was actually through inviting Chicago Abortion Fund to come to campus um, to talk about their work that I was able to meet my now boss and I'm so likable. She just fell in love with me. <laughs> Want to hire me? <laughs> but like, as like cliche as that sounds, like really just doing what you actually want to do, um, and inviting people to campus or just hitting up people is a really good way to just explore your interests. And really, like, it's fine if that's outside of U Chicago too because um, there's so much opportunity to like be involved in really amazing like organizing work in Chicago um, that is not going to be centered around you Chicago mm -hmm. um, so yeah I guess that would be my advice um, and yeah just like you're doing great you're already doing so great <laughs> that would be <laughs> my advice yeah and a plug for anyone watching this to join Project Reproductive Freedom. Um, yes, <laughs> definitely. It's the best RSO. I'm not uh, by it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Um, is there anything else that you want to share with our audience or any final thoughts you have? Um, I would just add, because before the other question, I didn't say if somebody wanted to get involved with Chicago Abortion Fund <laughs> yes, in particular, because um, we are one of like two reproductive justice organizations. The other one is Illinois Caucus for Adolescent Health, which is also a great organization to check out if you're interested in reproductive health. They do a lot of um, work with like theater and storytelling and engaging like youth through that, and you all are youth, so... <laughs> um check that out but also yes yeah, so for Chicago Abortion Fund I mean we're always looking for supporters and volunteers if you want to fundraise for Chicago Abortion Fund you can always do that um and we are also our helpline is run by volunteers right now um hopefully we'll be able to staff it soon um because we want to have that infrastructure like I was saying but if you're interested in volunteering in any capacity you can check out our website um and we have like a volunteer form um, you can also just email me directly if you want, um, which is on the website too. Amazing. Thank yeah. you. People have and follow no us on Instagram. On, on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? Our Instagram is Chicago Abortion Fund. And we also have a Twitter, which is Shy Abortion Fund, and also Facebook. Great. Chicago. People have no excuse not to get involved. They can do it at UChicago. They can do it outside. They can go on their phones. Everyone right. should be following. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you so, so much for joining me today. Um, I know our bound cohort will really appreciate what you had to say. So thanks. Oh, I hope so. I mean, <laughs> no worries if you don't. It's cool. I, like, <laughs> I don't remember who talked to me during bound, but it was still a great experience. <laughs>